Clive Steiner, Doctor of Medicine. Tonight's story has the title, Just Like Your Father. Guardian of birth, healer of the sick, comforter of the aged. And the qualities of the worthy physician are three. The eye of an eagle, the heart of a lion, the hand of a woman. Our actual case history tonight concerns the field of abdominal surgery. The object in point, a piece of candy. A case in point, the Honorable Mr. Leonard Woodman. A keen and finely tempered intelligence has made Judge Woodman one of the most respected theorists on the law. His writings are everywhere admired for their balanced judgments and their searching insights into the most complex of problems. And above all, a serenity of mind and spirit removes him above the confusions of the world of emotions. You might still be in court. Hello, Harvey. Aren't you early today? Well, it's after five. Oh, I hadn't noticed. Uh, well, do you just tend to that, and then I'll drive you on home. Fifteen-minute parking, so don't take too long. <laughs> Wouldn't look right for a famous judge to be brought into court on a traffic ticket. <laughs> it's from young Mosmer at law school. It isn't enough that you help one young fellow through law school. It has to be a whole army of them. Send this along to young Mosma, would you please, Harvey? I don't see why you have to shoulder their burdens. Why, when I was their age, I was making my own way in the army. Best thing for them. Yes, Harvey, I know. Develops their character. Just like your father, never spend any money on yourself. Now, take that card They have more use for the money than I do. Harvey, I think you better go on home. Now, this work here is going to keep me another three or four hours. Now, you're not going to stay here and go without your dinner again. Those things can wait. They'll be here in the morning. Besides, uh, cook's waiting dinner for you. If you can call it that. New England dinner. <laughs> Boiling all those vitamin E's out of perfectly good vegetables. Fish. Now, that's what you need. You may be a fine judge and all that, but there's always plenty of room for a little good brain food. Yes, sir. Fish. Harvey, would you please go on home? I'll have some dinner brought in. There. You see? Edgy. You're tired. You're getting yourself all run down. You're, you're pushing yourself too hard. Harvey, all I ask is that you leave me alone to work. Now go on back to the house. I'll go come home in a cab. Now you listen to me, Lenny Woodman. I took care of your father, and I give you my word I'd live out my life taking care of you. Harvey, mind your own business. Now get out of here and let me work. Yes, sir. Sorry I bothered you.
must, however, be borne in mind that the law does not function for the purpose of adjusting to the peculiarities of the individual. Laws and the courts that administer them are communal properties. They belong to all of us together, not to each of us individually. Whatever celestial courts there may be, it is their duty to... Whatever celestial courts there may be, it is their business to evaluate individual conscience, temperament, and intellect. The courts of this world have no such duty. Our standards are general standards and we must take no account of individual weakness, peculiarity, or defect.
Unconscious, and the patient cannot speak and give no clue to his trouble. He cannot tell how the strange seizure begins, how it grows, how fast or how slowly. From a myriad possibilities, medical skill must as quickly as possible arrive at the answer, a single answer that will save a life. Time is needed, but there is little time, too little time. Doctor, Mr. Mills has just arrived. He's outside. Oh, thanks. Uh, get a catheter in. You better draw some blood for an NPN and sugar. Yes, sir. Mr. Mills? Uh, yes, sir. I'm Dr. Hill. You're a member of Judge Woodman's family? Well, I took the phone call at uh, home. Uh, yes, I suppose I am a member of his family. I'm the only family he's got. Do you know who Judge Woodman's personal physician is, by the way? Why, uh, I don't think he has anyone. But I take mighty good care of him. Used to be in the medical corps in my old army days. Oh, I see. Well, um, how would you say the judge's health has been? Anything unusual? No. Judge is solid as oak. Of course, he has been pushing himself a little lately. Uh, nervous and blue. Just like anyone else that's run down, doesn't get the proper nourishment to build up his energy. I tell him the fastest thing for quick energy is a tablespoonful of good old-fashioned black strap molasses, uh, especially in the morning. Oh? Why do you say especially in the morning? Well, lately, his nerves have been very bad. Sleep doesn't seem to do any good at all. Mm -hmm. And then the nervous symptoms, they sort of go away then? Like that, before he's halfway through his first waffle. Tell me, Mr. Mills, does the judge seem particularly fond of sweets? You know, candy, things like that? Yes, sir, that's another thing. Why, lately he's been popping candy into his mouth, one piece right after the other. Mighty bad for the teeth, I tell him. Thanks. Now, don't go away. Thank you very much, Mr. Mills. Please don't go away. I want to talk to you further. Uh, don't you worry, Doctor. As long as he's in there, I'm going to be planted right here. Start an IV right away, glucose and water. Get me 50 cc's of 50% glucose and put it in a syringe. What do you think it is, doctor? Well, as every indication, hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia, a deficiency of sugar in the blood. Sugar which the body needs to nourish the cells, without which the cells starve and become paralyzed. Such starvation to the nervous system, particularly to the brain cells, can result in profound changes in the victim's behavior pattern and his personality. Unchecked, nervousness is followed by increasing anxiety, sweating, severe emotional disturbances, then convulsions, coma, and after that, certain death. And what causes this deficiency in sugar? Located in the upper abdomen is a gland known as the pancreas. It has two functions. It creates the juices that aid in digestion, and in certain cells known as the islets of Langerhans, it creates insulin, the secretion of which controls the amount of sugar in the blood. When these islets of Langeran cells degenerate, too little insulin is created, and there is no control of sugar. The result is diabetes. But when there is an overgrowth in these cells, as from one or more tumors, there is an overabundance of insulin, and the sugar in the blood is destroyed. Hypoglycemia. You can always be fairly sure of a case of this kind by three simple proofs. One, the nervous symptoms. Two, the drop in blood sugar. Oh, when you get it back from the lab, you'll probably find that it's dropped from a normal of around 100 to 40 or below. And three, the dramatic recovery they make when they're given sugar. Have you ever seen a patient come out of hypoglycemia, Jones? No, sir. One minute, they're in coma, and in less than a half a minute after glucose, watch. What is it? Where am I? What happened? You're in a hospital, Judge Woodman. Everything's all right. 
Please lie down. What am I doing here? I feel all right. I know you do, but please lie back. What's the matter? You've had a type of shock brought on by a blood sugar deficiency. When we know more, we'll tell you. Meanwhile, please try and rest. the judge. Oh, he's doing fine. I brought you some coffee. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. How can you do it? Sip hot coffee? <laughs> it's easy. It's no trick at all. See, the real trick is to suck it in. No, what I really meant was how can you sleep on this hard bench? It's been two days now. Oh, army days. I've got a cast iron constitution. Oh, I see. Oh, uh, where's your coffee? Oh, I have some at the desk. Uh, mind if I join you? Not at all. I'd be delighted. Dr. Himmelbaum. Dr. Himmelbaum. Sugar? Well, yes, why? Bad. Now, here's something much better for you. <laughs> Good old black strap molasses. <laughs> yeah, pure energy. I showed that to Dr. Hill. And he patted me on the back and he says, Harvey, he says, you just give some of that to Judge Woodman. It's the finest thing in the world for him. <laughs> Fine doctor, that Dr. Hill. He listens. You know, between you and Dr. Hill, you'll have Judge Woodman on his feet in no time. Well, come on, drink up your coffee. While it's hot, there's nothing in the world worse than cold coffee. I thought you said hot liquid. Oh, well, <laughs> drink up, drink up. <laughs> yeah, it takes a little practice, but it's worth it. <sighs> well, good morning, Harvey. Still here, I see. Did you get the test all done? All done. Oh, what is it? Did you tell him what was wrong? I thought it might be a good idea if we had his family there when I told him. Care to come along? Oh, mighty nice of you. Yes, doctor. Thank you very much. Bye. Dr. Martin. Dr. Martin. We're quite sure, of course. That's why we kept taking so many blood sugar tests, one after another, just to be sure. All of our findings indicate a tumor of the pancreas. Actually, we're pretty certain right from the start. Well, it's no trick to take out a tumor, uh, is it? Uh, of course not. <laughs> Why, well, I remember in the war, they, uh, um, they, uh... It's easy to take them out, isn't it? Uh, no trouble at all? I have to be honest with you. We can be reasonably sure there'll be no trouble if the tumor is benign. There, you see? Everything is going to be all right. But what if it is not benign? Let's suppose it's malignant. Cancer? In all probability, the tumor is benign. Malignancy in these cases is a rarity. But what if it is malignant? Well, if so, we may have to perform a more extensive procedure. It might involve removing the entire pancreas. But you took all those tests. You can tell us now which one it is, the... Uh, uh, benign or, or the other kind? I wish I could, but I can't. Unfortunately, there's no way of telling that in advance. In other words, you'll only find out on the operating table what the future is. I mean, if I have a future. Well, you might put it that way, Judge. The only thing I can tell you is that everything possible that can be done will be done. Harvey, I wonder if you know how I feel now. On the appointed day, at exactly 7.43 a.m., the operation begins. 
a life is in the balance, a most worthy life, in the hands of four men and two women. Charles Hill, M.D., Surgeon, American Board of Surgery. Thomas Cunningham, M.D., Assistant. William Trailer, Anesthesiologist, M.D., ABA. Albert Brody, Pathologist, M.D., and Margaret Leaf, Circulating Nurse. Later, when the pancreas is finally exposed, a single adenoma or tumor the size of a cherry stone is revealed. With his hands, the surgeon feels gently along the pancreas for any other tumors that might be embedded in the tissue, out of sight. Search over, the tumor is removed, wrapped in a sponge, and given to the pathologist. In the laboratory, the pathologist will make a quick frozen section of a specimen from the tumor. Studying it, he will be able to advise the surgeon as to whether it is benign or malignant. The procedure takes only five to 10 minutes. And in the meantime, everything stops, even the operation. Are you sure that clock is right? Well, that's it, Mr. Mills. Exactly 9.55. Oh. Oh, try not to worry, Mr. Mills. I'm sure everything will be all right. I'm not worried. I never worry. I'm scared. Just a little scared. Everything's all right, Harvey. He's doing fine. What about the tumor? What'd you find? We got it. And it's not malignant. He's going to be all right. Now, don't think this whole thing came as a shock to me. Not on your sweet life. I saw it coming for weeks, for months. What did I tell you? Never take your proper foods. Never get your right exercises. Now see where it's brought you. Yes, Harvey, I know, I know. Don't you tell me you know, Lenny Whitman. No. Oh. You don't know. I've been talking this whole thing out with Dr. Hill, and he agrees with me perfectly. Crazy hours. Pushing yourself. Not getting your good foods to eat. Now, there's going to be some changes made. There's going to be no more of that. Understand? Yes, Harvey. I'll do anything you say. You will not. I know you better than that. You'll be right back to work. You'll be doing the same thing right over again. Just like your father. <laughs> Harvey, would you like it any other way? Why do I put up with it? Why? 